Hello and welcome to one of the seven black wins from this very strong CCC9 bonus 3 event. There were seven black wins, 80 white wins and 213 draws. So this made me wonder again whether the perfect chess game is a draw. And maybe it is, but these results definitely don't strengthen that uh, supposition. In this game on the white side of a French, we have Turbofish, which is actually stockfish set with a very high contempt value, which makes him overly ambitious. And he tries to avoid all kinds of simplifications that could lead to a draw. Against weaker opposition, this might be a good strategy. But against this very strong field from this tournament, it backfired and Turbofish actually finished last. And on the black side, we have Terminator, which uses a neural net trained on Lila games. It uses a bigger neural net than Lila used in competitions and it can retain more info and play stronger, but it's also a bit slower in calculations. Turbofish started with e4 and after e6, d4, d5, knight c3, we have a sideline with knight c6, which looks weird at the first sight because it blocks the c pawn and the black usually breaks in the French with c5, but this move has its own points. And this is where the book ends and Turbofish is very happy with white's position. But even though this is just a sideline and it doesn't even have its own variation name, this variation was, was played quite a lot at the highest level. Georgian Grandmaster Badur Yobaba played this quite a lot with black. So why is this knight c6 move even played? Because it seems to be hurting black. It seems to be preventing him from attacking white center. Black usually tries to win the e4 pawn by pinning this knight on c3. Or he takes this pawn or he attacks it with knight f6. These are the main variations of the French. The knight on c6 seem to, seems to be misplaced. There is a knight c6 move in the Tarash where white plays knight d2. And now the queen is not defending the d4 pawn and knight c6 makes sense. But after knight c3, this knight seems just to be misplaced. However, knight c6 is not pointless at all. This is a, a good move and some of the points are visible immediately after white's e5 move. Now it is true that black can break white center by attacking the base of this chain, but he can attack the head of that chain with f6. And black is threatening to win a pawn on e5. What can white do? Well, if white takes on f6, then this is just good for black because it gains the f6 square for the knight. And actually white can't take really advantage of the e5 square because after knight f3, bishop d6, they are both fighting for the e5 square. White now pins this knight. However, after castles, castles, even though black can't play e5, because then white takes here and then forks these two pieces, black can play knight e7. And his idea is to play c5 and exchange these pawns. And then the e5 square is already not that weak and maybe black can even get in e5 at some point. Instead of uh, e takes on f6 in this position, white can try other moves like knight f3 or f4, but black can just quite simply take on e5 and white will have to recapture with a pawn and black's position is actually not bad at all. Another try for white instead of e5 is to wait one move and play knight f3 and only play e5 after knight f6. Now e5 comes with tempo and there's no f6 of course. And if now the knight would have to go back to d7, then this would be very good for white. But fortunately for black, he has this move knight e4, which is very good. He is threatening to take this knight and double white's pawns. He can even pin this knight with bishop b4 if he wants to. And the point is that this knight cannot be taken by the c3 knight, because then after d takes on e4, this knight has to go and then white loses the pawn on d4. In this game though, after knight c6, where the book ends, Turbofish still went for e5, because now after f6, instead of e takes on f6 and f4 and knight f3, 
white has a much better try and that is bishop b5 he pins this knight and the point is that if now black takes on e5 then white is not forced to take back with this pawn he can give this check with the queen and after g6 take back here with a piece and now e5 becomes an outpost and this pawn on e6 is weak and this would be very good for white black has to play here knight f6 so in the game after bishop b5 we don't have f takes on e5 we have first bishop d7 on pinning this knight and now after knight f3 defending e5 we have queen e7 terminator intends to castle queenside and in this position white mostly tried short castling some great names who played this with white karyakin nakamura morozovic so this was played at the highest level but here we have queen e2 and now terminator goes for the bishop pair with a6 and if bishop d3 then knight b4 still gets the bishop bishop a4 is possible but turbo went for the bishop exchange and now after bishop takes on c6 we have castling queen f7 making room for the knight rook e1 and now e takes on f6 is suddenly a big threat so terminator decided to close the center with f5 turbofish continued now with knight g5 we have queen d7 bishop d2 and now bishop b4 but terminator doesn't really want to exchange his bishop for one of these because this bishop is too important in guarding the weakened black squares in black scam so after knight b1 he just returned with the bishop to f8 and after knight c3 he goes back again to b4 but he just wants his bishop out so that knight e7 doesn't block in the bishop we now have b3 and knight e7 and now after queen h5 check we have g6 queen h4 and now h6 but of course the pawn is pinned so he cannot take the knight but now after f4 terminator played knight c8 and he's intending bishop e7 so we have knight f3 bishop e7 and now queen g3 the queen attacks this pawn on g6 and terminator didn't play here king f7 because he wants his king on the queen side so he defended the pawn with the rook and now we have queen h3 the queen now attacks the other pawn so bishop f8 and now finally turbo decided to expand on the queen side with a4 t responded here with a5 and now we have rook c1 b6 terminator wants to reroute this bishop to a6 where this bishop would be of course much more active we now have knight d1 bishop b7 c3 knight e7 rook b1 bishop a6 and this bishop is eyeing d3 so the knight guards that square from f2 king d8 and this king is heading to b7 where it will feel much safer queen g3 king c8 bishop e3 knight c6 rook a2 bishop e7 h4 king b7 rook d2 knight d8 knight h3 queen c6 this queen is attacking c3 so we have rook c1 but now bishop a3 forces the rook to c2 queen d7 and there's a lot of shuffling going on here because they are both trying to maximize the potential of their pieces before making a pawn break we now have rook d1 bishop e7 queen e1 knight c6 queen d2 queen d8 g3 rook a7 rook b2 queen d7 rook a1 king a8 queen d1 rook c8 knight f2 knight d8 and now finally turbo breaks on the queen side with b4 terminator took the pawn on b4 and after c takes on b4 right before b5 could shut down the bishop he now played bishop c4 and he's intending to play knight c6 and attack on b4 and if this pawn attacks the knight then go to a5 but the turbo fish of course anticipated that and played b5 not allowing the knight to c6 but now we have c6 attacking b4 b takes on c6 but now the queen has to recapture since b6 is hanging and now since there's not much left to do for turbo fish on the queen side he redirects now his attention to the king side 
and plays g4. But Terminator ignores everything that's happening now on the king side because he has a target in the form of the a4 pawn. And at this point, Turbofish still thought that this is good for him, plus one. Terminator says it's, it's more like minus 0.5 for black here. The game now continued with knight b7. This knight wants to go to a5 and later maybe to c4. We have g5 and at this point Terminator decides to close down the king side with h5. He has this nice target on a4. We have bishop d2 and at this point Turbofish's optimism fades a bit. He evaluates this position as 0 0.3 while Terminator still thinks that it's about minus 0 0.6. We now have knight a5, king h2, bishop a6, allowing now the knight to go to c4. And this bishop also wants to reroute d7, where it attacks this uh, pawn. The game continues with rook b1, knight c4, bishop c1, and now it's time for this bishop to go to d7, so we have rook c7, king g3, bishop c8, knight d3, bishop d7, knight b4, and here terminator could have taken out that knight, but he values the bishop more than the knight, so he played queen b7. And now we have rook a2 and rook a5 from t, and he's making the final preparations to win down the pawn on a4. Turbofish continued now with bishop d2, but after queen a7, this pawn is lost, it can't be defended. If he tries rook a1, then uh, the knight can take on d2, and after queen takes, the bishop can still take on a4. So instead of rook a1, we now have bishop back to e1, and now the bishop takes this pawn, and after queen e2, terminator decides to trade down into a winning complex endgame, and he takes this knight on b4 and after bishop b4 he has this trick with bishop d1 attacking the queen and threatening to win an exchange so turbofish is forced to take the rook and after the bishop takes the queen he can take the, the queen on a7 and now the rook takes on a7 and in this position black is a healthy pawn up and he has also better pieces this knight on c4 is a monster and black is winning. Turbofish played now here knight e1. Uh, allowing this bishop to take out the knight wouldn't be wise, for example, after something like king f2, because then this knight on c4 could not be challenged anymore, and this rook would have much more space to roam around in white's camp. So instead of that, white played knight e1, and now we have king b7. If rook a2, then white has bishop c3 with the threat of exchanging this rook on a2. So instead of that, we have king b7, and now rook c1, rook a4, bishop c3, rook a3, king f2, and here after bishop d1, turbofish decided to exchange the bishops. He took on d1, and now after rook takes on c3, d4 is very weak. And Terminator can now win it with moves like knight c6 and rook d4. The game continued now with knight d3, knight a5, knight e1, knight c6, king e2, rook c4, and here Turbofish decides to defend the pawn with king e3. But now we have b5, and this pawn is marching forward. So Turbo couldn't just sit and defend passively the d4 pawn, he had to give that pawn up for some activity and he played here knight d3 going for some tactics and now after rook d4 he actually could draw the game after this knight c5 check because after king b6 there's knight d7 check saving the game. Rook takes on d4 and king c5 would still be better for black because of these two pawns so that would be still winning for black however knight d7 leads to a draw after king c7 rook takes on d4 knight takes on d4 knight c5 and now this knight has to leave leaving e6 unguarded and the e pawn will give white enough chances for the draw but instead of taking with the rook 
taking with the knight actually is perfectly fine and now after knight b2 rook b4 is enough but we have knight c2 check and after king d2 we have rook c6 knight d3 king b6 rook b1 knight a3 rook h1 and now after rook c2 check turbofish decides to go to the first rank and now after rook c3 and king e2 terminator could play here d4 allowing this king access to the e4 square and now after rook a1 everything is defended for black so the king has safe road to e4 we now have king c6 rook a2 king d5 rook b2 and now we have king e4 attacking this knight twice and also attacking f4 and if white defends here passively with rook d2 then there's knight c2 shutting the door on their rook and now this pawn can safely advance and become a queen so instead of rook d2 turbofish tried here knight f2 check but now he's losing f4 and after knight d1 rook c5 rook d2 he's also losing e5 and now we have rook b2 king d5 rook d2 b4 knight d3 check king e4 knight f1 f4 and the horde is advancing rook d1 rook c2 check knight d2 counter check king d5 king f1 e5 king g1 e4 and you can start making your bets about which pawn will promote first and if, it, if they will become a queen or not rook d8 king f4 king f1 king g3 and while white is uh, busy with these central pawns the king will pick up the king side pawns king takes on h4 knight a5 and now after rook c1 this pawn will promote it can be stopped so the king takes on e3 but now we have the new queen the rook has to give himself up and now after knight b3 king g5 and a couple of more moves the black king and the knight will start a little touch and go but eventually <clears throat> the pony will remain without gas and will give up the chase here we go and now we have king e3 g5 and these pawns advance but terminator is a bit confused because it has too many pawns so it sheds a couple of them we now have rook attacking the knight and eventually the king will take that pawn and now the b pawn advances and the knight has to take it and from here on it's easy terminator will give up his knight because it's in plus and will mate with rook and king here we go the final moments of the game and the mate with the rook on move 145 a nice win with black by terminator in a sideline of the french with knight c6 one of the few black wins one out of seven in this uh, very strong ccc9 event please subscribe like and share and check out some of the other games thanks for watching see you soon and take care